the pit and the lake and the hole. The next morning was the beginning of winter vacation. I was up before the great horned owl came home from hunting and before the little lizards called anoles were warm enough to move and run. It was the hour when spiderwebs gathered dew and butterflies hung upside down at the tips of leaves waiting for the sun. The air was damp and heavy to breathe. It was so early mom would not be leaving the diner for two hours. I picked an orange from a wild orange tree the Spaniards had left behind and took a biscuit from the tin bread box. The orange was deep gray, the biscuit pale gray, for it was still night. When I reached Gumbo Limbo Hole, the orange was orange and the biscuit was tan. The stripes on my shirt had changed from many grays to many reds. The sun had risen and I could see color again. The sun comes up swiftly over southern Florida. On this day there was darkness, then pink light, then pop, a red hot penny of a sun was sitting on the horizon. With that, a colorful Gumbo Limbo hammock materialized. Green palm leaves pranced like tethered ponies in the morning breeze. Yellow flowers rustled. I could also see Dejun's beach where he came ashore during the day to bask in the sun. He wasn't there. I looked at his night camp, which at this time of year was in the deep water of the hole. In winter, this water is warmer than the night air. Dejun, like all reptiles, is cold-blooded. He cannot manufacture heat as humans do. Instead, he regulates his temperature by moving from the water to the land and back to the water, depending on which will keep his temperature normal. He is a sunshine animal, hunting and bulldozing and basking on the beach by day. When he gets too hot, he goes into the water to cool off. In the hot afternoons, he often regulates his temperature by floating at the surface. The sun warms his back and the water cools his belly and feet. At night, when the air is colder than the water, he seeks out deep holes for warmth. As I stood there, eyes on Dejun's beach, Travis materialized in the sunlight. I backed slowly into the alligator flags, a tall plant that grows around alligator holes. Hidden among the flag-like leaves, I watched. If Travis had seen me that morning, he would certainly have wondered about me. Why would I come back today after being so scared last night? The official turned his head slowly, surveying the lake, then eased himself backward into the dense willows. Pulling branches over and around himself, he sat down, took out his pistol, and lifted his binoculars. My heart thumped so loudly I could hear it. His gun was aimed at the sawgrass prairie at the far end of the lake. During the day, Dejun often hunts snakes and muskrats in these grasses that grow in the knee-deep water. My only thought was to scare the old dragon into hiding. I crept out of the flags and, dropping up to all four, scuttled into the woods like a raccoon. Near the banyan tree, I ran into James James. Getting to my feet, I put my finger over my lips and pointed to Dejun's beach. James James, I whispered. Travis has a gun aimed at Dejun in the sawgrass prairie. I'm going there to throw rocks at him and scare him away. Don't bother, he answered. I've just come from there. He's not in the prairie. He's not, I said in gleeful surprise. Then where is he? He's not in Gumbo Limbo Hole or on his beach. I don't know, James James rubbed his temple with the tip of his forefinger. But we can't look for him while that official is there on his beach. Think, James James, I said pleadingly. Think. Okay, you climb the oak tree. There is a large limb at the top with a great view. Look for Dejun while I join Travis. I'll walk into him from the north as if I was coming from the condos. I'll tell him I saw his reward notice. Then I'll say the big gator is in the lake on the golf course. I'll take him there and leave him. He smiled puckishly. That'll give us time to get Dejun into the solution pit when he comes out to bask on his beach. James James started off. He had walked about 10 steps when he stopped and came quietly back. If you see Travis leave the beach before I reach him, he whispered, call like a great horned owl. One hoot means he's going towards Gumbo Limbo Trail. Two hoots means he's going to the Sawgrass Prairie. Either way, I'll cut over and meet up with him. Got it, I said. Before climbing the tree, I went to the solution pit. I wanted to be sure Dejun had not gone there on his own. I would know if he had. He flattens and tramples the plants when he walks. The plants were perky and unsmashed. Nevertheless, I checked the water. It was dark and clear. Little fish swam vigorously. They came into the solution pit through the holes in the limestone, 
when the winter sun dries up the wet prairies and swamps. A snake crossed the water and a frog leaped in and disappeared. Behind him came a weasel who stopped and sat on his haunches. He looked at me unafraid, but there was no dejeune. Satisfied on that point, I climbed the oak using our orange crate to reach the first limb. After that, the branches provided a staircase to the top of the tree. Poking my head through the leafy canopy, I looked out on our world. I was an eagle surveying my home. I could see my enemy, Travis. He was still in the willows behind Dejeune's beach. Surrounding my hammock on three sides was Pineland. On the fourth side was the sawgrass prairie where Travis thought Dejeune was lurking. The prairie was surrounded by a cypress swamp. Beyond the cypress swamp was an abandoned tomato field. Still further on in the pink haze of morning, I could see Big Cypress National, Natural, National Preserve. It was gray because the leaves of the trees fall off in winter. I looked north to the condo village and a canal. The canal was built to drain a cypress swamp to the north so that Silver City, a new retirement town, could be built. The water drains into Chocoloski Bay. To the south, I could see the highway to Miami, cutting through cypress forests and the sawgrass prairies. The mangrove swamps lay beyond the highway, and beyond the mangrove swamps, the beautiful blue Chokoholsky Bay stretched all the way to the sky. To the west, the tall buildings of the county government center jutted above the mist that hid the sunshine town of La Playa on the Gulf of Mexico. Hardly did I have time to absorb the details of my kingdom when I saw mom coming down the road. She was on her way home from the diner to change into her business school clothes. She turned onto Gumbo Limbo Trail, and I sucked in my breath. Travis could see her when she reached the Royal Palm. The trail went along the edge of the lake at that point, and anyone walking, it would be seen from Dejeune's beach. Travis might catch up with her and find our home. I searched my brain for a way to turn her back. Fortunately, James James arrived on Dejeune's beach. Travis lowered his binoculars and came out of the willows to speak to him. They talked and pointed. Travis looked animated. Then James James gestured in the direction of the golf course, and Travis nodded. He followed James James toward Gumbo Limbo Trail. They would run smack into Mom coming home. James James and I had not agreed on what I should hoot if one of the woods people appeared, but I gave one hoot anyway. It did mean Gumbo Limbo Trail. Since James James was with Travis, maybe he'd conclude something was wrong with Gumbo Limbo Trail and change his course. He did. He turned right around and headed for the prairie trail, scratching his head as he made some explanation to Travis. There is something about living in the woods that makes it possible for people to use other languages. I blew out a long breath as Mom walked under the royal palm in plain view of the beach that James James and Travis had left only a second ago. I stayed in the treetop. My eagle's eye view was giving me new insights into Jejun's world. Gumbo Limbo Hammock is circular. The hole, which is the size of a football field, is in its northern border. The solution pit is almost in the center of the hammock, as if the trees had grown in out around it, which they had, James James said. The hammock trees, which are hardwoods, grow on the highest land in the county, the rocky hammock land. Hammocks are only three or four feet higher than the pinelands that surround them. On yet lower land, the cypress trees grow, and on the lowest land, the sawgrass takes over. I had been told this last year in my environmental studies class, but not until I looked down from the tree did I see that elevation does indeed determine which plants grow where. There before me was my class lesson. Hardwoods on highland, pines lower, cypress lower, and sawgrass so low it is in water most of the year. Dijun was a citizen of the lowlands. I could see where I had to look for him. In the cypress swamps, the wet sawgrass prairie, the holes and pits and canals. Still, I didn't come down. I kept looking at Dejeune's home, Gumbo Limbo Hole. James James and I never know whether Gumbo Limbo Hole is a solution pit or a lake. Florida lakes are gently sloping and lined with clay. Solution pits are steep-sided and rocky. From where I sat, I now saw that Gumbo Limbo Hole was both. Its clay edges sloped gently, which made it a lake but its center was a deep rocky pit or solution hole. The combination was ringing bells in my head, but I couldn't find a door to open that would lead me to the answer. One door did open to me up there. It was the one that let me see what my teacher meant when she said a hammock is an island in the woods. That's exactly what it is. Our hammock floats in a sea of pine trees. It is also a greenhouse as we woods people and the birds and animals know. 
The air within it is warmer in winter and cooler in summer than the outside air. A dense evergreen canopy of leaves keeps the temperature constant. We have our own furnace, air conditioner, and humidifier. More bells were ringing in my head. Alligators have to regulate their body temperature by, by moving in and out of the water, shade, and sun. Hammocks regulate temperature too. Think, Liza Kay, think! Nature was telling me where Dijun was. If only I could hear her voice. And suddenly I thought I did. My eyes fell on the large steel drain pipe that lay under the condo road. These culverts are built all over South Florida to carry off 40 to 65 inches of rain per year. Alligator hideout, I shouted gleefully. Dijun's in that culvert. Alligators dig caves in the limestone at the edge of their water holes where the females hide their hatchlings so beasts and birds won't eat them. A culvert was a ready-made alligator cave, and the one I was looking at carried water from the condo side of the road to our side and on down to the bay. Dijun could easily have walked from Gumbo Limbo Hole, Sawgrass Prairie, to the Cypress Swamp, to the Slough, and up to the culvert. All those waterways were connected. I had put my foot on a lower limb to hurry down and find him when the sun struck Gumbo Limbo Hole. It shone like a blue star in a green sky of trees. I stopped where I was and stepped back up. So clear was the water that I could see to the very bottom of both lake and pit, which together are Gumbo Limbo Hole. I searched for Dijun. I could see garfish and turtles and that big bass I had been trying to catch. Frogs swam toward the shade of the trees. An otter spiraled into the emerald green pit and came up with a fish. But I did not see Dijun. He was absolutely not in Gumbo Limbo Hole. Of this I was certain. Another look confirmed this. A dark area of blue-green algae grew near the royal palm. Green algae is good, but blue-green is not. We had learned this in school. Green algae grows under the water on all objects that the sunlight can reach. It is food for the microscopic animals, which are food for larger animals. The green algae cleans the water, making it gem-like and clear. You can grow green algae by putting a glass of plain tap water in the sun for several days. Blue-green algae, on the other hand, is an announcer of doom. It says the water is polluted with phosphorus and nitrogen from septic tanks, farms, lawns, and road runoff. That day, it also said to me that there was no dejun. If he was there, he would have bulldozed that clump of blue-green algae to shore. It suffocates the fish and turtles he lives on. Somehow, he knows this and weeds it out. Although both kinds of algae are green, they are easy to identify. The blue-green is darker and is thick and stringy. It grows in blobs and clumps and quickly fills the water. The green is just a pretty bloom on underwater rocks, sticks, and leaves. Convinced that Dijun was hiding from the hunter in that big culvert, I started down again. I also reasoned that he was hunting somewhere else, or he would have cleaned up the blue-green algae in Gumbo Limbo Hole. I stepped downward limb by limb. Three limbs below, I realized how much I missed that alligator. He made Gumbo Limbo Hole special. I remembered him lying on his beach without twitching an eye. I remembered him leaping straight up in the air like a dolphin to catch a heron on a limb. My days after school would be dull without Dijun. He was a substitute for the friends I could not bring home. Gumbo Limbo Hole would miss him too. Weeds would fill it and blue-green algae would thicken the water to the consistency of gravy. I was feeling sorry for myself and the woods people when I saw Priscilla below. She had a mini gin bottle in each hand and was pushing around the cocoa plums into the pine forest. I leaned far out. At least I would learn why she collected those bottles. Priscilla disappeared behind a large clump of saw palmetto. I waited, but she did not reappear. Down on the ground, Mom began humming as she fixed breakfast before going off to her school. The smell of bacon hastened me earthward. I even passed by a beautiful zebra butterfly without stopping. I dropped onto our patio. Surprise, I said, startling Mom. Where have you been? She snapped. I was worried about you. Looking for Dijun. In a tree? I can see our whole world from up there, I said. The hole, the pines, the canals, the trails, and you coming home. I sat down on my rock. And in case you don't know it, I added sassily, I saved you from danger. She pinched my cheek. Her brown eyes were surrounded with smile lines. My brave darling, she said with the same sassiness I had given her, was a coconut about to drop on my head? No, an official was about to find you. Her eyes widened. 
and her mouth opened ever so slightly. Mom is tall and thin with brown curly hair like mine. When she is worried, she wrinkles and shrinks. She looked very worried and small. You did save me, she said. He can't take us away now. I'm so close to finishing my course. She walked to the stove and turned over the bacon. Then she spun around and shaking her head to rid it of worry, smiled brightly at me. The diner needs a new manager, she said. I applied for the job today. It pays very well, Liza Kay, very, very well. Her lips parted, her face grew soft and smooth, and she seemed to be looking out at a little white house on Japonica Street. James James came around the leather fern and hailed us with a big grin. Travis was not with him. He was, I imagine, walking around the lake on the golf course, weaving in and out among golfers, stopping for their shots, and looking fruitily for Dijon. It's going to take Travis a long time to get around that lake, James James said. There's a tournament this morning, and the place is mobbed. Have some bacon, I said gleefully. I think we should get going, he answered, taking a crisp strip and setting it down. We have to find him soon and catch him. You don't have to hurry, I said. I know where he is. I served myself a cup of oatmeal and began spooning it down. I had been up since five and was very hungry. Where is he, for heaven's sake, Mom asked impatiently. In a culvert. Aha, she said, cracking her head as if that could be just where he was. Have some oatmeal, James James, and make yourself at home. I've got to go or I'll be late for class. James James arose and saw her to the door, so to speak. At least that's what his motion said as he walked her out from under the oak tree and with a slow sweep of his arm, pointed her on her way. At times he can be very polite. Mom's feet fairly skipped as she went through the woods. That's how much she wanted that job. As for me, I both did and didn't want her to get it. James James sat down on the crate and ate slowly, savoring each bite as he savors walking, looking, and listening.